Okay, what is the rule for a function represented by the ordered pairs? It's 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 5, 3, 10, and 4, 17. Uh, sometimes you can see it written as a table as well. Okay, and it just looks like this. 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 5, 3, comma 10, and 4, comma 17. All right, first thing we want to do is kind of tell if it's linear or nonlinear. And we do that by seeing if there's a common difference. So from 1 to 2, we add 1. From 2 to 5, we added 3. Okay, bam. Right away we know this is clearly a nonlinear situation. I'm going to continue to find the common differences though. Plus 5, and then plus 10. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. Alright, so we know it's going to be nonlinear. We're going to have an exponent in our function rule. Now we're just going to kind of see what type of relationship it is. Is there a common ratio, or is there an exponential relationship between the x and y values? So, now we'll look to see if there's a common ratio. Well, if I multiply 1 times 2, I get 2. If I multiply 2 times 2, I get 4. I do not get 5. Therefore, there's no common ratio. All right? If there's no common ratio, we now start to see what's going to happen. It's going to be an exponential relationship. And that we're going to have an equation in the form of y equals something with the exponent. And because there's no common ratio, we're going to add 1. It's going to be a tail. Sometimes there won't be that this tail if it's a common ratio. So let's look at this now. Right, a couple ways to do this. First thing I would do is I would subtract the tail, I'm calling this plus one, this constant over here, the tail, from all the y values in this table. And I'd rewrite the table. So, that's comma y. I would have zero comma zero, because one minus one is zero. One comma one, two minus one is one. Two comma four, five minus one is five. Uh, four. 3 comma 9, 10 minus 1 is 9. 4 comma 16, uh, 17 minus 1 is 16. Now that I've done that, I can start to look to see what is happening. Okay, how am I getting from 0 to 0? Well, I can raise 0 to any power that's not 0 and get 0, so that doesn't really help me. How am I getting 1 to 1? Well, I can raise 1 to any power that's not 0 and get 1. So I'm going to focus on the inputs of 2, 3, and 4. Well, how does 2 become 4? Well, 2 squared is 4. Let's see if that works for everything else. 3 squared is 9. 4 squared is 16. So I now know that I'm squaring the x value. And then I'll have to go back to add 1 to get to this initial value table. So the function rule for this problem is y equals x squared plus 1. Another way to know that it's x squared so we're going to go back to those differences that I was doing before. Okay. Now we can see there was not a common difference the first time through. If there's a common difference the second time through with those numbers, talking about these numbers right here, that means you're going to have a variable squared. And look at this. Plus 2, plus 2, plus 2. So there's a second common difference. So that means we're going to have an x squared term. And there's your answer. y equals x squared plus y. Let's look at this next problem. Alright, again we want to find the function rule represented by the following ordered pairs. We have 1 comma 2, 2 comma 4, 3 comma 8, 4 comma 16, and 5 comma 32. Again, I'm looking for a common difference first. Plus 2, plus 4, plus 8, plus 16. Oh, that's not working. So I'm going to look for a common ratio now. And look at that. I kind of figured it out as it's going through. It's doubling each time, right? I'm multiplying by 2 every time that I do this. That means I have a common ratio. When you have a common ratio, it's in the form of y equals whatever the ratio is raised to the x power. Because I'm multiplying by 2 each time, It'd be y equals 2 to the x power. So check this out. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the second power, 4. 2 to the third power is 8. 2 to the fourth power is 16. Uh, 2 to the fifth power is 32. It works out. So my function rule is y equals 2 to the x power. And again, this is a nonlinear function.